in nature we will find plants animals human beings microorganisms soil water wind temperature oxygen etc these components of the environment interact with one another to maintain a balance in nature the living components of the environment are called as biotic components and the non living components are called as abiotic components the interacting living components and non living components of a particular area forms an ecosystem ecosystem means biotic components and the abiotic components of a specific area forests ponds deserts or the examples of natural ecosystems whereas gardens crop fields and aquarium are the examples of artificial ecosystems now let us see the different organisms of a pond ecosystem animals like pond snail pond scatter tadpoles turtle duck mussels leech fish frog plants like water lily lotus duckweed water chestnut and microorganisms like bacteria and protozoa all these are the biotic components of a pond ecosystem whereas oxygen carbon dioxide temperature sunlight nutrients all these are abiotic components of the ecosystem the biotic components of an ecosystem are categorized into three types according to their mode of feeding they are producers consumers and decomposers green plants and some bacteria carry out a process called photosynthesis and prepares their own food they are called as producers the animals that feed on plants are called herbivores the animals that feed on herbivores are called carnivores the animals that feed on both herbivores and carnivores are called omnivores the herbivores carnivores and omnivores all these three together called as consumers the organisms that feed on the dead remains of plants and animals are called decomposers do you know why these are called decomposers because these organisms decompose the complex organic substances into simple substances this process is called as decomposition food chains and food webs living things need energy to live from where do they get the energy from food a snake gets energy by eating a rabbit that means the energy flows from rabbit to snake from where do the rabbit gets the energy from the plant it eats from where do the plant gets its energy from the sun so sun is the ultimate source of energy plants convert this solar energy into chemical energy that is food that is why plants are called producers the animals that feed on plants are called herbivores are primary consumers the animals that feed on herbivores or primary consumers are called secondary consumers the animals that feed on secondary consumers are called as tertiary consumers now here we can see a chain of organisms which are depending one on the other for their food requirements such a chain showing the food relations between the different organisms of an ecosystem is called as food chain each food chain has different trophic levels we find producers in first trophic level primary consumers in the second trophic level secondary consumers in the third trophic level and tertiary consumers in the fourth trophic level in this food chain we can observe the flow of energy from one organism to another organism now let us learn some more important points about the flow of energy in a food chain a plant can convert only 1% of 
of the total sunlight that falls on their leaves into food. The energy in the plant flows into the body of the animal that eats it. Can the animal use the whole energy that is obtained from the plant to build its body? No, because most of the energy that flows into the body of the animal is released out in the form of body heat. Some energy is used for digestion and for other physical activities. Only the remaining energy is converted into the body of that animal. On an average, only 10% of the energy obtained from food is useful for body growth and development. The rest is spent for various activities. So, in a food chain, only 10% of the energy from level 1 is available for the level 2. Only 10% of the energy from level 2 is available for the level 3. And only 10% of energy from level 3 is available for level 4. So, we can observe a gradual decline of energy from first level to last level. That is the reason why the food chains usually have only 3 to 4 levels. In a food chain, the flow of energy is unidirectional. That means the energy flows from a herbivore to a carnivore, never from a carnivore to herbivore in reverse direction. And one more important thing is that the number of organisms in the lower tropic level are very high. As we go up in the tropic levels, we see a decline in the number of organisms at each level. Sometimes, one animal found in the food chain of an ecosystem can be a part of another food chain also. That means, in an ecosystem, many food chains may be linked with one another. If we present all these food chains in a graphical form, it looks like this. This is called as food web. This is all about the food chains, food webs and trophic levels. What is biomagnification? Hello students, welcome to Great Booster. In this video, we are going to see what is biomagnification. We all know that bacteria, viruses and insects attack the plants quite often. If these pests and insects are not controlled, they make the plants weak and sometimes they may kill the plants. That is why in agricultural fields, plants are sprayed with chemical pesticides and insecticides. These pesticides may enter the food chains and cause many problems. Now let us see how these poisonous chemicals enter the food chains. The pesticides enter the plant bodies in two ways. One, when the pesticides are sprayed, the leaves, they absorb the pesticides into their bodies. And two, the insecticides that fall on the ground mixes up with the soil and absorbed by the plant roots along with water and minerals. Sometimes the pesticides that are mixed with the soil seeps down and contaminate the groundwater. Sometimes due to heavy rains and floods, these pesticides reaches the water bodies like ponds and rivers. Then these pesticide and insecticide residues enter the bodies of aquatic plants and animals of that pond. In this way, these chemical pesticides and insecticides enter the food chains. If a pond is contaminated by pesticides and insecticides, they enter the bodies of aquatic plants present in that pond. The amount of pesticide residues increases if we go up in a food chain. Let us see how it happens. From the same pond, a snail may eat many such polluted plants in its lifetime. So these poisonous chemicals enter the body of the snail. Then the amount of chemical deposits in the snail is obviously higher than the chemical deposits in each aquatic plant. Now, fishes eat such contaminated snails in a very large quantity in their lifetime. Then these fishes will get more chemical deposits 
into their bodies consider the next organism in this food chain is man man who usually stays at the top of the food chain if a man consumes such contaminated fish in large quantity all the chemical residues present in the bodies of the fish enter the body of the man in this way the pesticide and insecticide residues they get deposited and accumulated in our bodies this phenomenon is called biological magnification every day we use many food ingredients like rice wheat sugar milk meat vegetables all these things we source from either plants or animals pesticide residues from these ingredients enters our body even though we wash our food ingredients thoroughly and even though we cook them properly we cannot completely remove the pesticides from them moreover unfortunately our body cannot detoxify these chemical residues completely our body cannot excrete them also hence they remain in our body and causes various health problems okay children this is all about the biological magnification and its impacts on our health ozone layer how it is getting depleted we know one molecule of oxygen is made out of two oxygen atoms this oxygen is very important for the survival of all the aerobic organisms in some special circumstances three atoms of oxygen combine to form a molecule called as ozone its chemical formula is o3 oxygen is a life giving gas but whereas ozone it is a poisonous gas now let us see how this ozone is synthesized and where is this ozone found ozone is found at the higher levels of atmosphere that is around some 15 to 40 kilometers height from the earth at this location we find ozone this ozone protects the earth from the harmful radiations of the sun when the ultraviolet radiation from the sunlight hits the oxygen in the atmosphere then the oxygen molecules split into oxygen atoms now the split free oxygen atoms combine with oxygen molecule to form ozone molecule this is how ozone is formed the decline of ozone in the atmosphere was identified by scientists since 1980 the main reason for the decline of ozone is a chemical compound called chlorofluorocarbon cfcs are used in the manufacture of acs refrigerators fire extinguishers and spray cans in 1987 united nations environment program ungp made an agreement with all the countries to stop the uses of cfcs now it is mandatory that any company in the world cannot make refrigerators with cfc cfcs are not only the problem to ozone nearly 100 types of gases contribute to the ozone depletion so reducing the uses of this kind of gases helps to protect the ozone layer managing the garbage we produce in our daily life we throw different kinds of waste in that waste there may be some vegetable waste leftover food papers plastic covers disposable plates cups old clothes etc but the people who collect the garbage they collect the garbage in two categories one biodegradable and two non biodegradable first let us see what are biodegradable items if you observe the leaves that fall in the soil they slowly mix up with the soil do you know the reason the bacteria present in the soil decompose the leaves in the same way if any animal is dead and if its body lies in the soil the bacteria present in the soil decomposes its body okay first let us try to understand what is decomposition do you know 
the items that we use are made up of complex molecules converting these complex molecules into simple molecules is called decomposition bacteria they have some special enzymes in their body with the help of these enzymes bacteria decompose different items bacteria can decompose plant bodies animal bodies food items paper cloth etc the items that can be decomposed by microorganisms are called biodegradable items but if you throw a plastic bottle in the soil can bacteria decompose that no because if an object has to be decomposed the microorganisms should have particular enzymes to decompose it but microorganisms do not have the enzymes to decompose the materials like nylon plastic etc so this kind of synthetic materials do not get mixed up with the soil for a very long period of time these kind of materials are called as non biodegradable materials disposable plates spoons cups polythene covers plastic bottles synthetic cloths glass all these are examples of non biodegradable materials due to the changes in our lifestyle we are generating a lot of garbage in the olden days people used to use cardboard grass paper such items for packing now we are using synthetic materials like plastic polythene for packing purpose day by day the usage of non biodegradable waste is increasing this increase in the usage of non biodegradable items leads to so many environmental problems then what is the solution the solution is we have to reduce or reuse or recycle the non biodegradable items by this we can prevent the problems that are caused by the non biodegradable wastes thanks for watching for more cbse videos please subscribe to great booster channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications of all our latest uploads thanks for watching please like the video please share this video with your friends please subscribe to great booster channel press the bell icon to get all the latest updates check the description to find links of other useful videos check the end screens for our new videos